Welcome to the channel! Today we'll talk about Resure Simulation. At the end of this video, you will learn how deep learning speeds up geological carbon sequestration simulation up to 250 times. My name is Ruslan and I'm working as a CTO in a software company. Can we expect that traditional Resure Simulation software would get increasingly faster with each iteration? I'm not talking about simple black oil here, but rather complicated compositional simulation. The coupled physics put some limitations on the efficiency of the modeling workflow, and hence more complex physics requires more computational time. Let's take for example the geological CO2 sequestration process. Geological carbon sequestration is the storage of carbon dioxide in subsurface geological formations. Carbon dioxide is often obtained from an industrial or energy related sources, compressed to a fluid and injected into porous rock for long term storage. This is done to secure carbon dioxide in deep geological formations, to prevent its release into the atmosphere and contributing to a global warming as a greenhouse gas. I will refer to geological carbon sequestration as GCS to make my life easier. The coupled physics of the GCS process is nonlinear. So, we need a reservoir modeling system that can forecast pressure and saturation in real time, allowing us to make better decisions based on various optimization methods. However, it's not so simple to achieve. The governing partial differential equations of multi-phase flow in porous media are discretized into a large-scale algebraic system based on traditional numerical methods and then iteratively solved in physics-based reservoir simulation. However, as the nonlinearity of the process increased due to heterogeneity in rock characteristics, complex fluid thermodynamics and coupled physics processes, the computational cost become prohibitively expensive. It's a common issue with reservoir optimization. If we don't have a reservoir simulation tool that is both accurate and quick to compute, as a result, we are not going to be able to look at a lot of different optimization scenarios. We may have to settle on reservoir management of the sequestration process that might be harming for the environment. There might be several ways to solve the problem. For example, physics informed neural networks, so-called pins. The predictions by pins are ensured to be consistent with the physics of fluid flow in porous media. Pins are effective in predicting simple physics governed processes, but requires a lot of computing to address complex flow problems with significant heterogeneity and nonlinearity. We will not discuss pins in this video. If you are interested in learning more about pins, let me know in the comment section. This video is about the alternative way presented by the researchers at this publication from the Los Alamos National Laboratory. They propose a deep learning workflow to predict the evolution of the state variables. They simulate the process of CO2 injection and production in 3D heterogeneous saline aquifer. The modeling residual domain is discretized using a corner point grid. Using geostatistical simulation approach, multiple equiprobable realization of heterogeneous permeability and porosity fields are generated, and three typical realization at P10, P50, and P90 are selected. Let us talk about which features we might use for the training process. Features are defined as the input variables for the deep neural network. The candidate features available consist of rock-related properties, CO2 injection information, location of water injection wells and time step size. They analyze five alternative scenarios to help them choose which combination of features would best predict the evolution of state variables. 90 simulations are performed using the associated permeability porosity fields. It was decided to use 72 simulations for training which is account for 80% of the whole dataset and the rest of 20% for the testing and validation purposes. After assembling the input features and output state variables, they are fed into deep neural network for training and inference. By the way, if you like what you've seen so far, please smash that like button so the video will reach more people. 
it's really appreciated. The deep neural network used in this work is the Fourier neural operator, which operates directly on 2D pictures and has a high predictive potential for various physics-based processes. The deep learning workflow is presented here, because the entire workflow is based on 2D horizontal layer-wise images in a reservoir domain. They estimate the state variables for each layer iteratively so that they decouple physics and train the separate models for pressure and saturation. Training of this neural network took approximately 7 hours. Ok, here comes the most interesting part, the results. In the CO2 injection stage, the pressure network in scenario 1, where CO2 injection is a feature, has the lowest error in pressure. The pressure network in scenario 3 and 5, which includes cumulative CO2 injection as a feature, resulting in the two lowest pressure values in post-injection stage. In scenario 5, saturation neural network has the lowest overall saturation error in the injection and post-injection stages. They show that using two separate deep learning models to distinguish post-injection from injection stages generates the most accurate pressure predictions. The authors additionally selected a representative testing simulation run and depicted its pressure and saturation fields in a different layers and stages of the simulation to demonstrate the capabilities of time interpolation for the proposed deep learning network. The entire prediction with deep learning workflow presented here took about 10 seconds. The generalization ability on the same reservoir with varying reservoir properties is achieved. They've demonstrated that deep learning models have excellent fidelity and offer a speed up of 250 times when compared to a full physics reservoir simulation. As a result, it is a reliable prediction tool for long-term GCS processes and considerably benefits inverse modeling tasks that require hundreds or thousands of forward simulations. However, the issue of generalization for other reservoirs with different dimensions and reservoir properties remains unsolved. Perhaps we may explore making some changes to the solution to make it partially absorbable system that does not rely on global information. More questions about 3D grids and more complex physics arise due to advection reaction diffusion formulations. I hope that we'll see more research in this area. Thanks to the authors for making this research search public at archive.org. Here is another video about using AI for field development optimization that outperforms the conventional methods by 88%. And thank you for tuning in. See you at the next one.